Hey there everybody, just Marco here with another one for you. I hope you're all well, I'm certainly doing well here. Here I am in the Riverdale area of Toronto at Jimmy Simpson Park. Jimmy Simpson was the 44th mayor of Toronto, as well as being part of a group of striking workers in 1892 who started the Evening Star. Uh, the Evening Star later became the uh, Toronto Star. Ernest Hemingway actually for a short time worked for the Toronto Star. Right, interesting facts about the city, courtesy of Marco. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, a channel I love a lot is uh, Mark Wiemel's channel. As many of you know, he covers a lot of um, manual focus lenses, affordable manual focus lenses, and some autofocus lenses. Um, but he was talking recently about this and why photographers love it. I've owned this for uh, quite a few months now. I really like this little lens. I want to dive a little bit deeper into... Um, why photographers uh, love this little lens. All right, let's get to it. I'm reinventing myself. I'm me and nobody else. Ooh, I can't help but smile. The prerequisite flower shots. Some wonderful color reproduction here or rendition. Showing off that maximum 1.4 aperture. Wario is one of my favorite restaurants in Leslieville. This is the uh, gate to the Barrio patio and the lights over the Barrio patio. Pay phones. Don't see too many of those around anymore. You know you're in Leslieville when you see these benches. Getting uh, Vintage look on here, the old veterinary clinic. It's beautiful Ford F-150 owned by Bill. I've been hoping to run into this guy, ask him about his truck. And uh, I thought these garages were interesting. Mature trees along many of the streets. This kind of uh, rough looking place, thought it had a lot of character. Dog walking, very lucrative in Toronto. More colorful homes. Actually this next one is one of my favorite houses in the city. These guys were restoring chairs at a local restaurant. Hey there, here we are inside. I hope you enjoyed those photos as much as I did taking them. And uh, I will confess, I did steal Mark Wiemel's idea for an episode. And hopefully uh, Mark won't be watching this, but the other Mark might be watching this. Mark Bennett, he'll pop in to my channel every once in a while, which is, uh, is very cool. And uh, he's friends with Mark Wiemel. So Mark, don't tell the other Mark, please. Or it's pie in my face, I guess, or <laughs> whatever you want to uh, call it. You know, having owned this lens for a while, I thought that I could Tribute something as to um, you know like why this lens is uh, so popular among photographers and I want to put that into context as well because it's really only going to be popular among photographers who don't mind manually focusing it's a manual everything lens meaning you have to manually adjust the aperture as well but most photo enthusiasts serious hobbyists or professionals they're going to prefer adjusting their aperture on the lens itself anyway. It's really the focusing uh, that's going to divide people. Myself, personally, what I'm using this lens for, I'm not in a hurry to be catching some fast-moving action where I'm worried about uh, focusing uh, quickly enough. With the focus aids that you'll find in a modern camera like the A6700, it makes manually focusing uh, uh, a breeze so no real worries there and uh, there is something else to consider as well if you're often shooting with the um, uh, smaller apertures like this lens for instance here my Laowa 9mm f2.8 this is a awesome awesome lens um, very sharp as well just like this um, and I use this primarily for doing architectural and real estate stuff and uh, but personally I'll use it for doing like astro and things like that as well or landscape stuff even at f2.8 pretty sharp corner to corner um, but um, I'll be shooting this f8 
when I'm doing the real estate stuff because I want things as sharp as possible from the foreground and the background. F8 is sort of the sweet spot for this and it gives you that uh, deep depth of field. And uh, so not a lot of focusing involved uh, because I'm usually shooting this at f8. Now, when you're shooting an f1.4 wide open, um, chances are you're going to be wanting to uh, pay attention to your focus. And that's when you're gonna be using those focus aids like focus peaking and stuff like that and punching into uh, areas to make sure that you've got critical focus. Even if you are using focus peaking, you're still going to wanna um, magnify that when you're focusing uh, to make sure you've got critical focus. Something that you never be able to do with manual focus lenses, of course, in the past. So take advantage of those manual focus aids we've got in our modern cameras. So I think I did mention I've done some product photography with this. So certainly if you're doing any commercial photography, product photography is one of those things that you can accomplish with this because you don't necessarily need a autofocus lens to do product photography. And some people have said that this lens is a great balance between a vintage feel and not having the quirks of a vintage lens. Well, I don't necessarily agree with that because it is quite clinical. Apart from lens flare, which is something that Mark Wiemels mentioned too, he attributed that to the concave uh, lens element on this. Um, very interesting, it does have this concave lens element. I don't mind lens flares in my personal photography if I'm trying to do something artistic, but you're gonna wanna watch that if you're doing anything like commercial. So when I first got this lens, I did like kind of a first impressions video about it, and I mentioned how much I love the looks of this thing. It certainly has vintage looks. Um, not necessarily vintage character, but it does have the vintage looks and it does pair really nicely with this limbs leather half case as well. Something else I'll mention is something that Mark Wiemels mentioned is uh, it's got this really nice aluminum lens cap, but it's almost like vacuum that keeps it on there and it just fits on there so nicely. Uh, the only downside is I don't like that clanging around my camera bag, especially if I was working quickly and I threw maybe a filter into the same pocket. I don't want an aluminum lens cap against one of my glass filters in a pocket in my bag, uh, clanging around. Something that people may complain about is this aperture ring. The, they may call it sharp. Uh, I don't really find it sharp. I actually find it really easy to hold and turn, um, which is nice. And also, because it's so narrow, it does have a distinct feeling between it and the uh, and the focus ring. So having a focus ring and an aperture ring that feel very different from one another, um, I find very intuitive because just by feel, you know exactly what you're holding on to. Right, so that's something I, I like actually. So yes, in the context of photographers who don't mind manual focusing, this has been a very popular manual focus lens. And I think it comes down to the focal length, that 23 mil focal length. Of course, the f1.4 helps. Everybody wants a fast aperture, so that does help. I own the Sigma f1.4 23 mil for the same reason I bought this. Some people may know from my other episodes, I mentioned I dropped that lens and smashed it. <laughs> uh, it was an expensive mistake, but I used to actually shoot these talking head episodes with that 23 mil. And then uh, when I dropped it, I went back to shooting these talking heads with my, my 30 mil. Now I'm talking about Sigmas. This is a contemporary series, the 30 mil that I'm shooting with right now. And the one that I dropped was the Sigma contemporary series 23 mil F1.4. Dropped that lens soon after that. I bought this as an inexpensive interim replacement and never bothered buying that Sigma again because this really did fill that gap. I didn't really feel it necessary to buy the 23mm Sigma back once again. And I also got very accustomed to shooting these talking head things with the 30mm. It's a little too far in my opinion for doing talking head outside because I don't like being that far from the camera in case somebody decides to walk off with my, or <laughs> take off with my camera. I like my camera a little bit closer to me when I'm out in the wild. Uh, that's why I'm usually shooting my talking head when I'm outdoors with my 15 mil f1.4 Sony lens. I got accustomed to the 35 mil focal length on full frame and the 23 mil on APS-C brings you very close to that. So the combination of that 23 mil um, 
focal length as well as the uh, f1.4 aperture. Hopefully you guys got something out of this one as usual. If so, consider leaving me a thumbs up. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of these in the future, please consider subscribing. If you've got any ideas for future episodes, please leave that in the comments below. And until next time, keep working to make your chosen idea a reality. <laughs> Peace.